Pokemon do exist. Now everything started when I stumbled across this very book. Some of the most colourful things in this world are insects. Beneath the leaf litter of New Zealand's Southern Alps lives this creature most people have never seen and will never see. The Holocanthella, the world's largest springtail. It's rare, it's ancient, and it's found nowhere else on this planet. But today I'm not just showing you this giant springtail. I'm building an entire terrarium to bring a piece of the Southern Alps into my home. Oh Max, ever since I was a kid I've been obsessed with wildlife. I'm probably what you call an amateur entomologist, basically someone who studies insects, but for me it's a hobby. Obsessed with the creatures most people ignore, and the Holocanthella might just be the strangest one yet for me. You see, I know they exist here, and only here, and that's what makes them super special. A rare giant springtail, endemic to the bottom of the world. I wanted to do something unique for this one. So you see, you can turn anything into a terrarium, but it's a bit more complicated. You still have to go through the fundamentals, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now let's turn this into something beautiful. Now if I want to culture anything truly epic in here or make it a super epic ecosystem, I need to do it the right way and I need to do it all the way to the fundamentals. Starting with the lecker balls. The lecker balls are going to be my drainage, my base layer, very important. It's not just about recreating the Southern Alps, not just the look. I need to think about the microclimates, the decay, the fungi, everything these things need to survive and thrive. So there are a few things you need to think about when you're making terrarium. You need to think about your drainage layer, essentially the layer between the bottom and the main layer where the water is going to seep through and keep everything nice and dry and not over soaked where things will rot. You'll have your layer of spagum moss. Spagum moss is also another fantastic drainage layer that will host lots of good bacteria. And then you've got your activated charcoal. Charcoal is going to control odour, it's also going to control all that yucky stuff in your terrarium. And then obviously you're going to have your soil. Now I like to actually mix soil and cocoa fibre together. Cocoa fibre is really good to add depth and levels really easy to mold and shape as well but it does dry out quite easily so it's good definitely to mix it with topsoil as well now you just saw me misting misting is your best friend now i'm adding some springtails springtails once again are absolute gold in a terrarium and a must-have so when i think about these springtails these rare beings i think about the environment that they live in they live in the southern alps of new zealand they live in these beach forests they live in dark damp environments and that's what I'm truly trying to replicate when I build this terrarium. That's something that you need to think about when you're replicating any environment for any of your creatures that you keep.
Now the part that you've been waiting for. Let's add the inhabitants. I want to start with a small critter, this very important springtail. We're getting there. This isn't the species that you come here to watch, but this is also very truly epic. This is the Columbola, the springtail, also from New Zealand. Now these guys are super small, two to three millimeters length and super colorful. You can see there's a yellow, there's a bright orange, and there's some like dark blue. You see, these guys are a little community, a little colony, and these guys are gonna do all the good stuff that all the other springtails do. Now there's a little rascal here, as you can see, a little mischievous one exploring, maybe bothering his family, his parents, but just doing his own thing. You know, I watch these guys under this microscope and I'm just absolutely in awe of such beauty in such a tiny space. That's it, the Holla Canthella, the giant springtail of New Zealand, the biggest springtail in the world. You know, it can't jump, it's lost its ability. It looks like a Pokemon, it looks like a dragon. Look at those colors. There's very little known about the species. It's so small, they're not even protected here in New Zealand. They live in these localities and I just wanna learn more about them. If I can culture these, if I can learn more about them and, and I'm hoping in this video I can showcase the wonder, the beauty and how important these guys are to ecosystems, not just here in New Zealand, but how important spring tails are to ecosystems around the world. I suppose this video has done something positive. There are more than 6,000 species in the world with many more species still unknown to us. And I think that's truly incredible. These guys are so important for our ecosystems, for our soil, everything to grow, everything to thrive. There's at least 241 species of these guys in New Zealand alone and many more still undescribed. The problem with things so small and delicate sometimes is that they're really hard to protect. So hopefully appreciation goes somewhere. And for me, what I wanna do is I wanna showcase these incredible animals to you, these things that you will never see in your life most likely but they exist and they're super important and look at them the beauty selfishly i built this terrarium for me but i also did it for you i want to show you my journey how i'm learning to build these ecosystems these environments and also about these animals these creatures this incredible flora and fauna we have in this country as well as all over the world and how all these things interact with each other and also stay tuned and incredible little fantastic beasts to come mm -hmm.